let's um, let's go big picture with some names. Let's start throwing some names out, right? Let's do some name dropping. Oh. Um, <laughs> let's go hardest shot. Oh. Somebody who had a shot for you, Joe, that you were just like, cripes. Yeah, I don't want to deal with this guy today or any day. Oh, I mean, at the end of my career, I mean, it was uh, a guy like Victor Bernardis that would just <laughs> nail it. Um, Ante Razov had a pretty good one. What about in training? Uh, like guys, didn't Dwayne? You're not up there. Hard? You're not up there. <laughs> uh, if that's what it you're trying to learn to. Yards, I know. Dwayne, actually, Dwayne De, <laughs> Dwayne De Rosario was probably a guy too in training. Yeah. That was a, a the, guy that I think. I'm sorry, uh, Andre Luis Moreira could actually crush a ball. The Brazilian that I played with, my yeah. second, Andre Luis. He was a tall Brazilian guy, left-footed. Uh, played for about a year or two, but those guys, uh, and then. You know, but those guys didn't bother me as much as the the, the pure finishers, uh, the Taylor Twelmans, the guys that were always hustling. And was in that, you know, that category. Um, those guys annoyed me a lot more. Is there a guy you love going up against? Like you were excited for maybe some aerial challenges or anything? Or uh, I mean, Landon, because he really doesn't aerial go into yeah. aerial yeah. challenges. Or Richie Williams. Like Richie Williams will be another yeah, one. Yeah. Uh, but I, I think on the flip side, though, I think the guy, the number one guy, I hated playing against was Carlos Ruiz. I mean, because, because of the, the rivalry. Just I just felt he was going to do anything to to get the advantage, whether it was you know uh, diving. Uh, but just a pure finisher. And when he first came to the league, uh, I thought him and Ronald Cerritos were, were yeah. some of the best forwards I've ever yeah. been with. I hated playing against El Tanque, oh. Oh, yeah. Hurtado. Yes. It was like you got into his body and he absorbed you. <laughs> you became part of him. And uh, I, I just remember he was a specimen. I, you know, uh, technically not the, the, mo the, the top player in the world, but uh, I mean, he, he, this guy could move mountains. And you, you just hated like having him being the first runner across the right. box and you having to run with him. Because either the ball was going to hit you really, really hard or he was going to hit you even harder. And uh, man, I hated those. Let, I hated those. Let me throw another name at you because it's fun to say this name. Mamadou Diallo. Oh, oh my yeah. God. Big Mama. Yeah. El Tanque's uh, young, younger brother. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The Big Mama, uh, there was no stop. It was just go. And he, uh, he was. <laughs> Had one of the greatest personalities off yes. the field, and would just—you'd love to hang out electric with him. Electric smile, <laughs> electric smile, and I—I I hated playing against that guy. It's, he was just huge. It's funny. He ran into Mike Amen, and it was on the pre-game, on the pre-production. Greg Lawless asked, "Do you have any stories you'd like to tell now that your uh, your your career is over?" And I. And now that I think about it, when Mama Diallo ran into Mike Allman, and no one knows the story, I actually sent Mike flowers. <laughs> to <say it> like, <laughs> and he never acknowledged it or anything, and so maybe I thought I Mike thought. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah I, I, I honestly want to know if Mike got those flowers. So if you're out there, Mike, Mike Allman. Let him know. Mike. Let him know. <laughs> Trust me, it's bothering you. <laughs> the, guys that, the guys that you hate playing against, really, are the guys that can just destroy you out of the back. I mean, the Valderramas and the Ramoses. Right. And I got lucky because I was playing against Marco Echeverry every day in training. And so that, that kind of set you up that the expectation at that level is, is pretty high. Yeah. Those guys could do things, even to, in, with the, the guys today, could do things that are very special. And so you hate, I hated playing. I mean, Valderrama would be looking that way and deliver a ball on a guy's foot the other way. It's just incredible. How about defenders that you uh, would have preferred not to have seen? Um, Danny Califf was always difficult because he uh, he knew me well, and he he wasn't dirty, but he was he would he'd stay like right next to me. So anytime I tried to grab you, like hold you here, or not let you move, or grab your arm, um, the one who still plays and Nat knows this, Nat Borchers, every time we played this guy. <laughs> The ball would be, I feel like I'm like an old man. Every time we played this guy, it was last year. Um, the ball, would, our, one of our defenders would have the ball be looking up to try to like maybe hit a long ball, whatever. And I'd start running, like looking back at my defender and just running. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, Nat would just nail me. In the, I mean, just running, and bam, right in the back. And after a while, I'd say, Nat, what the hell are you doing? He's like, you know, I'm just trying to, you know, throw you off a little. I'm like, the ball's 40 yards away, you know? And, and of course, the refs never see it. So yeah. it's like, you never uh, had so to play against Ivan McKinley. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ivan McKinley, great one. That's a great one because you would have, I wouldn't have made You never had to go year. out after a game with Ivan McKinley either. <laughs> if you survived the game, yes. you right. wouldn't have survived the night no, out. No, you wouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> Ivan was. I've been on a night out with Ivan too. McKinley and top Frank drawer. Oh, yeah, yeah. But Ivan, Ivan wouldn't care if he hit you or not. He wouldn't say you're sorry. He said, You'll get it again. Yeah, oh, and a, kind of a, a svelte 
Oh, guy. he was tall, yeah. but not not overly muscled. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He loved uh, to give it. Uh, did you guys ever have um, have an arch enemy? <clears throat> Is there an arch enemy in the league? That one guy you're like, ah, it's Costanza, you know, Kramer, Newman, Newman. Newman. Is there a Newman one. out there for you guys? I have one. Yeah? Who? And this is, I don't know how this came about, but, and I really like the guy now. And uh, I think as our careers have gone on, uh, we started to settle. For some reason, John Bush and I always had something. There's really? something always going on. And I, maybe his little man complex with us or something. Like, I don't know. what. There's always some, like, animosity there. And I think as our career went on, we both sort of realized, like, it was never spoken about, but there was always just, we always just, Something was happening there, but I really like him now, and he's had a great career, and so you live and learn. Arch enemies? It was you more team-based. It was more team-based. I mean, every every guy went up against as a forward, you know, there was obviously some animosity, and, but I, there was no distaste for, for anybody. I think you, you respected what each other could do. So I never really, I mean, it's more like, you know, New York and D.C., yeah. those, those uh, San Jose and L.A., you know, the Ruiz. Those, I mean, all those guys, I respected what they do, but there was no... You didn't dislike the person. Yeah, right. That's right. Yeah. On the field, you'd be right. But then... Anybody, Joe? We all have respect. Anybody you still would like one more double-fisted clearance <laughs> punch to take out Me. with? No, no, no. I, I just, like I, I said before, I think Carlos Ruiz was just a guy that I loved beating. I just, I think he was a very difficult opponent. Uh, whether he was at L.A. or even Dallas yeah. later on, I thought the first couple of years in Dallas, he still kind of... Uh, was playing up to his standard. All right, so. give, me some, give me a smack talker. A smack talker and the smack talk. You mean besides Steve Ralston? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, right. Steve, <laughs> Steve didn't say a <laughs> word. Say a word. Yeah. Uh, I was going to say, yeah. I, I, missed, I missed that one. I wasn't on the field, but I heard Kyle Beckerman. Oh, yeah, Kyle really? talks a lot. Kyle talks a lot. Kyle's fun, though. I mean, I've grown up with Kyle, right? So we played on the 17s together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we'd have games. We'd have like played in a U.S. game three days before, and on the weekend we'd be playing. And he'd be like, "F you, Lynn. And I'd be like, "Dude, we like grew up together. Match up." But I love Kyle. I mean, Kyle's the guy. He's like top five guys you would take on your team right now today because he he's a competitor. He cares and he wants to win. I mean, like, so you love it. But you could. I, there was times in games where Kyle would, you know, Kyle would get mad at the ref. And, you know, he'd say, oh, the refs gave you another penalty, gave you another penalty, Landon. What, are you going to ask for another penalty? Are you guys going to get another penalty? <laughs> and I'd say, Kyle, I didn't make the decision, dude. Like, why are you yelling at me? Go talk to the ref, you know? And then he yes, kind of, like, are. quiet Yes, we down. are, Kyle. Yes, <laughs> LA will get another penalty. <laughs> yeah. Who's a good one who I, yeah. we actually played with was Troy Dyack. Oh, yeah. Troy loved to talk, <laughs> and I loved listening to him. Yeah. With the boot, oh, yeah. Yeah. the hat and the boots coming in. I, just loved, I just loved hearing some of the comments he would, he would what make. Did, what would he say? Some were classy. Was, Watch out, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Watch out. I'm coming. One of the best characters. Uh, you know, do you love remember Troy. the uh, New England game when he got sent off? Do you guys remember yes, this game? Yes. So we're playing at home. Down 2-0. We're losing 2-0, and he gets sent off. So next thing you know, we're all like trying to organize ourselves like what are we gonna, we gonna go to three in the back whatever and we look they look down the other side of the stadium troy's got his shirt off and he's going like this <laughs> riling up the crowd he just got sent off right yeah. we're two zero down you know and uh and, then, and we actually came back and tied two two and then in the locker room he's like i had to do that to fire you boys up you know <laughs> like get out of here dude that was awesome what was it like playing uh at spartan Stadium, the, the 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 cozy confines of Spartan yeah, I, Stadium. I loved it because I, look, I went from one of the biggest stadiums at DC United to one of the smallest, and we yeah. used it to our advantage. Right. Teams did yeah. not know how to play on it, and it really gave us a competitive advantage in terms of being a technical team and being able to move the ball and being able to get the ball in front of goal. And especially with guys like Landon and Dwayne and all the guys we had up front, they, they would see the ball a lot more, and so we use really use it to our uh, our advantage. Yeah, it was awful because I played with the earthquakes <laughs> in the beginning and then playing with Colorado against them, you just felt you were in a cage. Yeah. Like, you, it was just, like, you just were suffocated. I, I just remember one game, I think the first half, I just felt like they were just coming at us all game long. You'd punt the ball, it would come right back at you. You had Brian Ching, Landon, uh, Brian Mullen. Yeah, Ramiro Corrales was attacking. I wouldn't be surprised if Pat Onstead had a, a shot on goal that game. <laughs> I mean, it was just... He could have scored it, a goal. Yeah, it was ridiculous. So, I mean, it, as, an, as a home team, it was the best. Because you just felt once when Frank came in, and these guys will tell you, like, 
it, it was a special place. Yeah. A lot of special games happened there. But on the flip side, if you're against San Jose, uh, I mean, think about it. the best comeback in MLS history was there. That whole that, 2003. That nobody that, saw. That, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah. well, but I'm just saying that was a very special place, and to play against and to know the history there, it was very intimidating. Uh, Cotton Bowl. Beautiful grass. I love best right. Field. Best grass. Best everybody grass. says that. Oh, what a field. It was, like, it was like a playing on a, uh, a green. Yeah, like a putting. Yeah. Literally like playing on a green. You're just looking for the pin. That's uh, all. I mean, it's just beautiful. Because the ball, when you would go to strike a ball, it just sat perfectly. So it was just so easy. As if you're going to shoot a ball, you knew you you knew if you hit it right, it was going. It was going to do what you wanted. The to challenge do. was getting to the 90th minute, at 110 degrees. <laughs> yeah. 90th minute Still or ninth? Still alive. Ninth minute. Yeah. yeah, ninth minute. <laughs>